Welcome to the Investing in Intelligence podcast, where we talk about artificial intelligence companies, stocks, and trading. I'm James, here with my co-host, Kai. And today, we will be talking about Taiwan Semiconductor. I want to remind you that the opinions expressed on this podcast are just that, opinions. They should not be taken as specific advice to invest in a particular way. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is the top global semiconductor foundry founded in 1987 in Taiwan. It manufactures chips for tech companies, enabling advanced electronics in various sectors. TSMC plays a pivotal role in the semiconductor supply chain, notably outpacing rivals like Intel in foundry services and advanced process technologies. In a moment, we will cover AI stock TSM in depth, but we start with this week's 30 Seconds in AI. Devon introduces a new AI software developer, while ServiceNow announces new medical AI tools. Apple is negotiating with Google to lease their AI technology. Startup Figure introduces a new robot that uses ChatGPT and surpasses Tesla's humanoid robot in dexterity. NVIDIA introduces new GPUs at its developer conference. Wall Street expert Adam Parker says it's unrealistic to not own NVIDIA, hoping for a pullback, saying anyone who thinks they know more than the hundreds of buy-side analysts is playing God. That's a new, that's a new segment there, uh, Dr. James. That is a, uh, a new segment there. So let's go ahead and jump into TSM. Um, so Taiwan Semi reported earlier on in the season than most companies. And they were one of the first tech companies to report. Um, so they closed out their fiscal year 2023 with their January 18 report. And we'll talk about the report in a second. I just wanted to mention that for disclosures, I do own TSM. It's about 6% of my AI portfolio, a smaller percent of my overall portfolio. And once again, we are in their first quarter now. So looking straight at their earnings report, it was pretty impressive. Uh, it looks like they beat revenue estimate. It looks like they beat, beat on pretty much everything. So I see beat revenue estimate by 0.3%, beat the guide by 2.2%. They beat their... Margin estimate, beat gap EPS, beat revenue. Oh, so for the next quarter guidance, they beat revenue estimate by 0.9%. Um, they beat the margin estimate. They beat gap GPM estimate. So it looks like pretty good, pretty good numbers. Now, although I see this on the stock market nerd report, this is from a guy named Brad on Twitter that does these reports. Um, from what I understood on their earnings call, I think they actually mentioned that they had a slight decrease in one of their margins figures. So they're explaining some of the difficulty they've had over the past year as a cyclical issue. And they're stating that also they're investing a lot in opening these new plants right now. So they're saying they've had some headwinds from opening the factories in Japan and also the factory in Arizona they're working on. I also think they're waiting on a bit of money from the US government for their Arizona factory, but they're, they're reporting those as headwinds, as costs that have factored into their margins and, and uh, will continue to factor in, although they're expecting uh, better margins in the future, especially a year from now, several quarters from now. So pretty good earnings report. And I would say that TSM is one of the four or five core AI companies that everyone wants to own right now. So NVIDIA, SMCI, ASML, Microsoft, and TSM. Those are really the big five that everyone should have in their portfolio. They are the designated winners of AI, and they will continue to win in the coming years as AI ramps up. So um, going from there, there are a lot of issues that can be discussed surrounding TSM, like the threat from Intel and the threat from China. Those are two of the biggest factors. Uh, but just looking at the overall financial situation, Kai, what do you think about their finances in general? What do you think about their earnings, about their revenue? What's your opinion on TSM as a company from a, a broad outlook? Yeah, I, I mean, this may be something you and I both agree, agree on for once, although I don't agree potentially with your previous statement there, James, as far as the all the big hitters that I would uh, agree on. Uh, and where I would put my stock and uh, potentially AI companies. I do agree that those are very big AI plays. I think they're good AI plays or uh, investments, so to speak. Although I think, for example, SMCI is at an astronomical valuation versus TSM um, is actually at the 21-day uh, moving average right now. 
it has shown consistent EPS growth, 15% annually, I think, for about the last 10 years. Um, it's got an extra, excellent share book value, book value per share growth um, over the last 10 years. And so from a, from a company standpoint, it's rock solid. Also, it's when you're investing in a company, and I did wanted to take a, take a few seconds to kind of get down to a few basics. And so when you're investing in a company, um, you want to understand what the company does. And so uh, if you can, James, just explain, explain from a very basic standpoint what TSM, stock ticker uh, Taiwan Semi, does. And then also just go ahead and explain. We've talked a lot about EPS. And so some people may watch the show and say, oh, this is very complex. But just when we look at EPS growth or quarterly EPS growth or yearly EPS growth, just define what EPS or earnings per share is. And then also um, go ahead and explain what Taiwan Semiconductor does. Yeah, absolutely. So for that's a lot of questions, a lot, a lot to handle there. But um, so for earnings per share, uh, what we call the bottom line takes in consideration their costs. So revenue, which is what they call the top line, doesn't take into consideration the cost and really it's not really the profit. So the top line of the revenue is just their gross revenue, how much money they made for that quarter, whereas the EPS factors in um, their cost and, and really is a calculation of their profit. So you could call Excellent. bottom line yeah. or EPS their profit, top line, you could call their gross revenue. Excellent. Yeah, it's just sales minus cost, essentially. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, even dividends come out of that cost or taxes, et cetera. So EPS is just a good metric to look and see whether a company is profitable or not. And so when, when uh, James and I are talking about EPS growth, it's basically saying this company is profitable quarter after quarter, year after year, and grows in that number. Um, the revenue for t TSM was around $20 billion. And so this is where I disagree somewhat with James as far as potentially um, some of the other companies, but this is this is billions and billions of dollars of revenue versus we talked about SMCI last week, and it wasn't twenty billion of revenue a quarter. So, we're you're expecting SMCI to jump off the railroad tracks and fly into the sky, and I'm thinking that that's potentially impossible for the train that is SMCI to do. In this instance, uh, Taiwan Zimmy has shown consistent EPS growth as well as revenue growth. So the le the question I asked I, I don't know I, I don't know if was... I can agree with you there if we look at the EPS here which we have in front of us we see it was higher than 182 fiscal year 22 quarter 4 so Q4 of fiscal year 2022 they were actually earning significantly more than they were now and more than than they were a few quarters ago so I don't know if I can agree with you what I would say here is that we see a cyclicality we see a challenging 2022 and a 2023 so Taiwan semi it accounts for 60% of the global semiconductor manufacturing. They are exposed to some cyclicality in the various semiconductor markets. So I don't know if I can say that we have consistent growth, but I think you were going to comment on the big five as a whole. So I'd be happy to respond to what you were going to say about that. No, the, the other question I wanted you to answer is just in general for our audience is um, what does Taiwan Semi do? And from a basic level, what does Taiwan Semi do and what are they selling? Yeah, absolutely. So they actually manufacture chips and chips are in just about everything nowadays. So they manufacture chips that go into cars. They manufacture chips that go into computers. They manufacture chips that go into smartphones. And Apple is one of their biggest customers. So just to give some more granularity into that, Apple's M1 and M2 chips, which went into prior MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros, used their five nanometer chip but the M3 chip, the brand new chip they're putting into their latest model MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs actually uses TSM's new three nanometer chip, which they're just now rolling out. Um, and I can give a little more info on that if, you, if you're if you curious, but to s summarize my answer, they just manufacture chips. That's what yeah, they do. And, uh, semiconductors are needed. What, electric vehicles, they're in electric vehicles as well as the chips that run. I think they're one of the, Qualcomm is one of the big purchasers of, of Taiwan Semi. One of the reasons why I like Taiwan TSM, Taiwan Semiconductors, is because you can see 10 years of a history on this company versus some of the other AI plays. In, NVIDIA, for example, it's only three years that we're looking at here. Here we see a, a picture of 10 years of EPS growth or 
uh, book value per share growth, revenue growth, et cetera. Um, so James and I can, can agree we like this company. Are you bullish on this company in the short term, James? Yeah, I'm definitely bullish on this company. I think they started in 1987, if I remember correctly. So you're right, they've been around for a long time. And more importantly, they have taken market share from Intel. They are the leader. So Taiwan as a nation produces 90% of the chips used in the world, which could be a problem. And Taiwan Semiconductor produces roughly 60%. So they have roughly 60% dominance in the uh, manufacturing of chips for the world. So I am very, very bullish, especially with AI. So that's really what we're focused on here. Now, they, they definitely are hitting some costs, some bumps in the road due to opening the Japan plant and the Arizona plant. From what I understand, they're kind of waiting on the US government to release certain funds for their Arizona plant, but they're hoping to manufacture their latest chip, which is actually a two nanometer. So the lower the number on the nanometers for the chips, the faster and more efficient they are. So the two nanometer will be their best chip yet. And they're going to manufacture those, I understand, in Arizona also, although mostly in Taiwan, but not in Japan and not in Europe. So in Germany, they're also opening a new factory in Germany. And that factory in Germany is going to focus on automotive chips. But go ahead, Kai. So you're long on TSM. So by long also, what I'd like to kind of point out is means that you would invest in or purchase a share of TSM and then expect that share to rise in the future, whether that's three months, a year, two years, correct? Yeah. And, you know, I haven't done, I actually haven't done a price target on um, TSM. We could calculate one quickly, but do you, do you have a price target in mind for TSM? And I, I think I didn't no, hear from I, you. Do I, you I, actually own TSM? So the interest I wanted to, so no, I don't currently own, I did own TSM. Um, it's currently at the 21 day moving average. So I had previously had taken uh, profits on the TSM that I own. I plan to purchase more TSM. I'm certainly, I'm, I'm in this waiting period. I want to see what the Fed does this week, which this week, which I want to hear you comment on, but I see three big issues with TSM. Okay. So I'm long on TSM as well. However, I see three negatives and I one of the, one of those you've alluded to twice, which is Intel. And so number one, one, my number one negative is the competitors. I think that is the most realistic negative. I think Intel and Samsung are also trying to catch up in regards to competition and, and getting in the semiconductor game. They're already in the game, but uh, uh, trying to catch up. And so I think TSM will face in the future, maybe that's two years, three years from now, competition, number one. Number two you also alluded to this as the rising cost. And so what goes into EPS is sales minus cost. And I think that over the last couple of years, we've seen inflationary costs, for example, in Ukraine or um, that have raised that portion of, even though their revenue may stay high, their cost has increased. And so I don't like that. I think that's a, that's a significant headwind. I don't think that's as significant as Samsung and Intel. But the third reason, which I'd like to really get your view on, is the geopolitical situation. And I think the the most real risk to TSM as far as whether I'd want to invest in them in the future is the rising competition and cost. But the the factor I'd like to hear you address is the geopolitical situation, which is the most unrealistic issue right now, but obviously probably the biggest threat if that were to happen um as a as a negative to going long on tsm what are your thoughts on that yeah i don't think that the geopolitical thing is the biggest concern right now a lot of experts think that china could make a move on taiwan in the next 10 years as of today it's not a big concern for me as an investor in, in tsm but what's uh so I guess you said, you said one thing most... there, though, James, you said one thing, right? the experts. So the experts, do you think the experts are going to be the best at predicting whether China goes ahead and, and invades Taiwan in the future? I mean, if, I think the one thing that experts have taught us in the last two to three years is that there's no such thing as experts in regards to some of this stuff. I think the biggest concern was that the weakness in China could give China a reason to invade Taiwan as a distraction from their economic problems. That doesn't seem to be happening. They seem to be finding some other ways to improve their economy in the short term. So I would say, once again, that's not a, also just with Ukraine, what the world has has shown here, what the Western world has, has shown to the China, Russia, North Korea axis is that essentially we're going to fund 
a smaller nation that is an ally of ours if they are attacked. And uh, so I don't think that we've given a green flag to China to invade Taiwan. Now, there is debate on whether or not uh, there could be more of a green flag when, when Trump comes in if he wins the election. But I don't necessarily think so because he's been tough on China in the past. So all of that is uh, speculation, is politics. But what I can tell you as far as competition is that TSM is significantly ahead of Intel. Now, Intel is trying to catch up. Actually, it's their specific goal to catch up uh, by 2025. They're hoping to take back dominance in semiconductors by 2025. And they're introducing a chip, which ironically is just point. 0.02 nanometers. So it's it's a 1.8 nanometer, so 0.2 nanometers smaller than TSM's two nanometer uh, chip. So they're introducing a slightly smaller chip and they've come up with a new way to manufacture this chip in in cooperation with ASML. And they're trying to say that that they expect this chip to outperform TSM. So TSM was asked that on the conference call. The CEO doesn't seem to have any doubts about their ability to dominate. And I wanted to just play just uh, just 30 seconds from the conference call here. We always make the right decision at the right moment to serve our customer. And so far, all our customers are happy with TSMC support grace. Okay. Uh, did that answer your question? Almost everybody works with TSMC on two nanometer except one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Were you able to hear that, Kai? Yeah, I was. So it's very interesting. I, I'd have two comments in regards to what you just alluded to. And so one thing when I invest in a company, and this is where I, I'm bullish on TSM. Okay. Let me just state that up front. But one thing that I, when I invest in a company, I ask in five to 10 years, is this company going to be around? For example, let's use Apple as an example. So in five to 10 years, I expect people to still be using their iPhone. Okay. In TSM, I think there's a big question mark because I think we're highly incentivized that in three to five years, we need to start producing semiconductors or purchasing semiconductors outside of Taiwan, number one. Number two, I heard you say that the geopolitical risk is less because of we're funding the war in Ukraine. So they're Therefore, China is more deterred because of our funding of the war in Ukraine. I actually disagree wholeheartedly with all of that. I think that China is emboldened like the rest of the world right now and to, in regards to America's weak foreign policy. And so if I am China, and this is where I think the heck with the experts, because if I am China and I think that Trump is going to win the election, I would go ahead and invade Taiwan prior to the election. And so one of the significant, although extremely unlikely risks, and I am not here saying that China is going to invade Taiwan. I'm just saying it's a, real, a realistic consideration to take into account when investing in a company, as well as depends on maybe how much of your portfolio or what you're willing to risk, because um, that is a very real scenario, although unlikely. So. Yeah, China's aggressive military posture towards Taiwan is concerning. So uh, supposedly they've sent a record number of fighter jets into Taiwanese airspace in the past months. But there's this idea, and I've just pulled up a video. Vice News just, I believe, a week ago did a report. You see somebody with a gun here. It's, a, I think, a Taiwanese soldier training. Um, so everyone's talking about this right now, and it's a big issue. But there's this concept of the silicone shield, which they talked about in this specific video. It's the idea that because Taiwan produces 90% of the world's chips, that the Western world wants to protect them. And the Western world wants, wants to, we want to hold up their ability to defend themselves. Um, so you're right. If, if China was to overtake Taiwan, it could be catastrophic. You know, it's $210 billion in revenue that was actually lost in the automotive sector because of the chip shortages during COVID. So Chips are critical to pretty much everything we do nowadays. Now, the U.S. Chips and Science Act, which is what the Biden administration has done to try and fund local manufacturing of chips in the U.S., allocates $50 billion to our national semiconductor manufacturing abilities. And I believe that our main goal is to partner with organizations like TSM in doing that. So I, I, Intel, if, you, if you're concerned about China invading Taiwan, Intel is a better investment for you. And Intel has built up their, so Intel manufactures most of their chips in the US. They have 
factories around the world, but Intel does most of their manufacturing inside the US. So if that's your biggest concern, then buy some Intel. I'd prefer to invest in the leader in manufacturing of chips. I'd prefer to invest in the one that Apple chooses, that NVIDIA chooses. I think they're going to do better. And China's invasion of the country where they're headquartered isn't as big of a concern for me, especially considering that they are opening these plants in Arizona and in Japan now. So for me, it's not as big of a concern. Um, but once again, for every investor, they have their own risk tolerance. We should wrap up though. But um, but I think we covered some good info on TSM. And I hope this kind of gives some insights to the average investor on whether or not TSM is right for them. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I really enjoy these debates and these discussions. And this is where it becomes a, a personal choice and the risk tolerance that you have. This is obviously a good company, obviously good revenue. There's that they produce a product that's needed. And I think it's at a pretty good value right now. I plan to trade TSM, but I plan, I'm not bullish in the five to 10 years because of my risk tolerance. However, we are in a bull market and it's at its 21 day moving average. So it's a stock right now to keep your eye on. And it's a stock right now that definitely I'm bullish about in the next four to six months. And so great AI play. Um, what do you think about the market? You, the Fed the Fed is speaking this week, James, really quick. And then also we, we're in a bull market. So what do you think about TSM just in the next three to six months trading it? Um, you know, are you just holding it for the next five years? Or are you trading it kind of on its highs and lows? What are you doing? Well, I'm not trading TSM. I'm holding it as an investment. When I did their price target a minute ago, I didn't show it on the screen, but it looks like their price target for the high estimate for this year is around $100 and it's already above that. So TSM for me is a growth story. And it's kind of like we said for Arista, the AI wealth effect hasn't really hit TSM yet, just like it hasn't really hit Arista. They're just getting underway. And also they're introducing these new two nanometer chips in 2025. So I think most of the growth is not coming in the next two quarters in TSM. I think it's coming in the next two years. So I'm looking forward to that and I'm holding it. I'm not trying to trade. This is not a trading vehicle for me. As far as the overall economy and where we sit this week, there are two big risks for the Fed meeting. Risk number one is that they move their cuts from three cuts for this year to two cuts. So if the dot plot moves in a way that they take out one of the cuts planned for this year, that's going to send the market down. Also, there's always the risk that uh, they could just say something that spooks the market. Um, that's the second risk. But I, I'm not too concerned about those things. I do think rates are going to be higher. So if the 10-year starts to move up, we're going to see the same pressure on stocks that we saw last year. And whether or not we're in a bull market might actually come into question. Do you, last question. Do you prefer hot or sticky in regards to inflation, James? <laughs> I prefer no landing. That sounds better than both of those two <laughs> options. <laughs> well, we got the Fed this week, guys. I, we really appreciate you joining. And uh I would love to, I, you know, I think this is a great company to look at. I, it, honestly, it's a great company. Bullish on it. I, I, I like, I think James is very wise in his approach. So, Awesome. Well, great. Well, thank you to everyone for listening uh, to our podcast. Please give us a rating review or a like on YouTube or a comment. And we'll be back in the next episode to cover AI small caps. You can find all our holdings and trades at investingintel.ai. Thanks so much, Kai. We'll see you next time.